G'day folks, it's Cortezarino, and we have a throne room, sort of. So I'm trying to remember where we left off last episode, so I can give you a little bit of a tour, even though this isn't really done very well at the moment, and I'm thinking the last thing you saw is probably a time lapse of me building that archway, so I think we'll go down to the bottom level and... Uh, and start from there. So that entire ground floor down there is probably pretty much unchanged, although I, I think I fiddled around with the roof in a few places and changed things up a little bit, just trying to hide lights and, and all kinds of weird things. So, oh yeah, I did change one thing all the way down here. We finally fixed up uh, this little storage room a bit. I've still got some linen hanging around up the top, but it's no longer a linen cupboard. Yeah, I changed the roof in this room a bit, but oh, actually, let's head on in this way because I added a few rooms that you can now access from this part of the building. So here's the first one. This wasn't anything before. This was just a hole in the wall, but now we've got just a uh, Another little bedroom. I'm, I'm focusing on bedrooms at the moment because we need somewhere for everyone in this castle to sleep. And we've got another little doorway stuck in the wall here. And once again, a nice little bedroom. Got a few windows and uh, and yeah, a big cabinet there. And once more, another. Oh, hang on. <laughs> okay, this room's not done. But uh, I was going to match up this with a few more windows on the outside, but. Yeah, I thought that was a nice little touch, just adding a few bedrooms sneaking out of that tower. But yes, the throne room is the main thing, and I think I said last episode I was going to make this area as uh, sort of like the king's uh, the king's bedroom, and I had it all planned out too. I started mapping, like just in creative building this into a big bedroom, a bunch of rooms actually, kind of like a, apartments for the king. So he had like a little dining room here. This was a big bedroom, and then one of those bedrooms in there, I had it as his walk-in wardrobe. But I kind of decided, with this big archway walkway over here, there is just going to be too much foot traffic of servants and soldiers and everyone, but I don't want them all walking past his bedroom. So we've done a throne room instead. So just over here, we've got a little little guard area so there's always guards here minding the uh, the entrance to the throne room and then up here up this staircase will be all royal family accommodation so no one's going to get past the guards and sneak up on the king when he's in bed so the top level of the archway is nothing special just somewhere for the royal family to come and sit down and look out over over their their servants their people's but uh, yeah, the throne room itself, we've just, we come through the door and we've got a little sort of waiting room, something to drink here, and then you head on into here. And I've got all these fireplaces because when I'm designing this thing, all these chimneys that I've got everywhere, I always have to make sure I have a fireplace that matches up to them. So this room's got two, the, uh, the king will be very warm. Uh, the only other thing I've got to show you is the bottom part of this walkway so I I put two doors at the end here it probably doesn't look as good but I thought it was a bit more practical so servants coming from the kitchen don't have to walk too far so the kitchen's down there they can come up here I've slotted this doorway in so yep we can come up here and also it connects to this floor as well so yes that's about all I've done here but uh, I haven't 
done anything else because I lost internet for about, oh, I don't know, eight hours, and I really felt like playing some Minecraft, but I can't record, like, do time lapses or anything when, uh, when I don't have the internet connection because I don't have my skin on. So I just was pottering around the world doing odd jobs. And the first of those jobs, which isn't particularly interesting, but I've got this room, boom, down here that I still needed to fix up the endings of the walls. And I've done a little tiny bit up here. Just put in a little cactus farm because I've already got one at my uh, at my oil rig base, but it's really small and I'm never there, so I'm, I'm nearly out of cactus. So I threw this one in. I think it kind of matches the room nicely. And I don't know, I may just copy the exact same thing down the other end, but pretty easy. Cactus fall down into water. So we've got some hoppers down there under the slabs. They go into a dropper and spit everything up into this barrel. So I haven't had it running very long, but I figured it's not going to cause very much lag at all. Like, I don't want to have too much lag around the base. That's not going to cause a lot of lag, and I'm always here. So I might as well be getting some cactus. Or maybe I'll put a kelp farm up the other end. Don't know. And the other little thing that I was kind of in the middle of doing when my internet connection popped back up, I was playing around with this room here. See, I've been messing with these just to try and make it so when I kill it with the skeleton, the drops don't fly everywhere and I can still get the XP and he can't escape from his little drop shoot. But uh, yeah, I put this little walkway in as well. I've got to be very careful with the spawning. and see all my shulker boxes are here because I was in the middle of working on it. But I don't really know... Well, I didn't know what I was doing with this room. But uh, then I was just wandering around some of my saved worlds. And I got some inspiration. And this is where I found it. So this is... Season 3 from the Diamond Society, the server I used to play on, and this area is by a guy called Green Matthias, who I really like his building because he uses block choices that I just never would have thought of. But look at this thing up the back here. Look at the walls on this. It's melons and the glazed terracotta, and it just looks absolutely phenomenal. But uh, inside this building, so I was just wandering around thinking, oh yeah, this looks cool. There's a room in here that's very, very similar to what I'm kind of working on right now. So this is the, the bottom floor of his thing, but he's got the raised walkway here. And I just really like the style of this, and I think I want to set up my Wither Skeleton Farm. Something like this, although I can't have the ceiling nearly as high, so it won't be nearly as impressive. But yeah, I think we're going to try and copy this a little bit. But you know what? This whole building... I love these pillars, mate. This looks awesome. This whole building here is inspiring me to build something. I'm just not sure what yet. Well, it's certainly not eye-bogglingly awesome, but it is definitely much, much cleaner than it was before. I do really like the floor, so this is pretty much a direct copy from Green Matthias's floor. It looks pretty cool, and I just took inspiration from his wall, like I didn't use the same materials 
But I wanted to keep it fairly simple, so we've just got the red nether brick squares with the bone blocks inside. But this is something I took from the outside of his building, having this line of the glazed yellow terracotta all the way around. I think that looks pretty cool. I couldn't make this place super duper epic just because that floor up there is the spawning platform for my wither skeletons. So I couldn't go any higher than this, but I think I've sort of matched up the entryways. I've done this tunnel. It's nothing special, of course, but yeah, it is definitely an improvement. Oh, and check this out down here. Something I discovered. See, this tunnel looks all... All good and fine, but if I were to jump in my little fast travel here with the ice road, get out of the way, Pigman, boom, this is what happens. So, yeah, I, I left a bit out there, gotta fix that. But let's mosey on over to the big, big project. This king's area for the castle is finally done. Not a whole lot on this side of the building, it looks pretty plain, but we've still got here. Uh, a castle wall to put around here and I think there's also another building attaching to there but uh, let's run on in to the to the inside and I absolutely love this archway this looks so cool I can't wait until the entire grounds of the uh, of the castle's done and we can just walk around here we might start in one of the little rooms running off that tower so I think it's this one right up the top here it didn't have any walls in it when we came through before but I quite like these rooms that are entirely encased with stone. See, I'm always thinking when I when I build something out of stone above, I always make sure I've got the foundations on the floors below so we don't have stone suddenly appearing above a wooden room. So, oh, and I've left out a, a little bit of stair right there. I'll have to replace that. But uh, yeah, this room is finally done all in case. We've got a few little windows as well. But uh, yeah, not a whole lot to see in here. Let's uh, let's go to the throne room. I'm being very careful to keep all the uh, all the doors shut in this castle, just because I haven't been around thoroughly to check all the spawning spaces, and I don't want to run into a creeper. It's a little bit uh, a little bit scary running around here. So this is what the throne room looks like now. So we've got some of these pillars going across the top. Like I said before, I'm always careful about having stone foundations. So there is a fireplace up on top of that little stone archway. But this room is a little bit weird, actually. So I've done the, uh, done the beams different on each side. That's just because this room isn't really symmetrical. You'll notice this throne is definitely not in the middle of the room, but I've, I've tried to make it so the beams sort of disguise that with a bit of optical illusion. So I think it works pretty well. It was definitely a, a tricky room to put together. But I, actually, I want to quickly look at this from the outside. See all these mushroom blocks here. This is a, a part of the building that's popping out a little bit. And I think it's good that the king from his th throne room has this... Uh, this nice opening here to look down on the courtyard and we can probably see it here from the uh, from the balcony actually yeah we've got this nice little white building sort of popping out from the side so that's what it looks like in real life and it's awesome copying things from real design so you get all these ideas that you'd probably never think of yourself but let's head on upstairs and this is all new so not much here I've just put down a little rug and a little bookcase and we've got all super duper high ceilings right here so that just opens out onto that little viewing balcony but uh, let's go into the uh, the royal family's quarters so we start with yes another dining room see i figured while the king is downstairs in his hall at his big dining table if he's just down there rabble rousing with the men then his family will want to have a quiet dinner upstairs, so they can do it here. And this was tricky. This building isn't very wide, but I wanted to have the, the king's quarters, but also a few rooms for children to sleep in, so they're not too far away. So I've made this little hallway. It's a little bit windy, but I think I've done it well. It doesn't look cramped or anything like that. So the first room is pretty small, just because we didn't have much room. I'm trying putting banners there just as sort of like a, a curtain that they can pull across. Don't know if that works completely, but uh, yeah, not a ton of things in this room here. 
The next one's a little bit bigger and a little bit fancier, probably for the oldest child. So we've got a nice bed, a few Enrod candles in here. And all I've done is put in a very weird looking bookshelf with a stool he can drag across so he can reach the top shelves if he needs to. I love this design for a stool. I am using it all the time now. But uh, yeah, the big one, the big main room is the king's quarters. Once again, I didn't have too much room in here, but we've done the big four poster bed. And I think that looks pretty cool. So what else we got in here? A few chests, that stool I love. We got the fire burning. I've got a lot of fire bur fires burning in our chimneys here just because it's a nice little lighting solution so we don't get the mobs spawn. And the only other thing is just up the back here, we've got a little tiny room here. It's mostly just access to the private balcony for the king. We've got a little tower thing right here. Uh, if I was an assassin, this is probably where I would come in, I think. You know, this is the first castle I've ever built, and I think the difference between the way I do interiors and the way I sort of see other people do them is I don't like cramped little rooms. I like things to be as big and open as possible on the inside. I think that just looks a whole lot better. So it does mean that sometimes I can't fit in quite as much detail, but I do think it does look super duper cool. Anyway, we are done with the castle for this episode. This should probably actually be the end of the episode, but I do want to do one last thing. And it's to do with cleaning up this spawn area a little bit. And also making a farm in my base to match up with that cactus farm. I'm thinking bamboo. I'm warning you, this is a little bit silly. This, my friends, is my entry into the most overcomplicated tiny little bamboo farm ever invented. I just wanted it to, to look like uh, the cactus farm up the back. So I wanted a big room with the bamboo in the middle. So that meant a flying machine to harvest it. So a lot of work, a lot of redstone went into this for something that I could have done just with a few pistons a lot, lot easier. And you'll see this bamboo down the bottom. It will get collected any moment by a hopper minecart that's running around. There we go. And that all gets spat up into the barrel. Eventually, there we go. It's coming in. So let's uh, let's get behind the scenes. Where's my axe? So the redstone isn't really that hard, but yeah, it took a while to put together. So the button is just above that wood block there. So the redstone line gets powered and that triggers the flying machine. So it just goes across and comes back. And then after a short delay, this hopper minecart will do a little circuit and then return to where he is there. And the hoppers just go over to there. Now, see my little flashy light over there? I just want to show you this. Like, If you do redstone, you already know how to do that. But that is the first redstone circuit I ever learnt. And it is by far the one I use the most. So if you know redstone, then this is very, very old news to most of you. But like I said, it is the best circuit that I... Well, it's a circuit I use absolutely all the time. So if you want the dropper to fire, as soon as items go in, just have a comparator leading away. Comparator leads into a block. We'll do a repeater from that block. Don't put any delay on it. And then another block there. And then what you do is go dust facing into the side of that comparator. And then another bit of dust there and a repeater and anything you throw in will get spat out like that. And then the good thing that you can do with this design is you can actually make it up to three droppers tall. And when you, when you do that, all you do is you knock those two out, put two blocks there and then just repeat it. So the repeater is now leading into the middle one and that will fire... All three droppers. At the end, there will be one item stuck in the middle dropper, but that is a super duper brilliant little circuit, and uh, yeah, you will use it all the time. Anyway, guys, we are going to leave it here for today, but uh, before we do, I have a question. I want to get started on the next level of the base, and I know my first project down here. I want to make a huge map room, a big wall of maps, but uh, there's the question. Do I do it on the wall or do I do the map on the floor so we can run around it? We're on a big table. 
Let me know what you think. But that's it from me, guys. Until next time, I'm Cortez Reno. I'll see you later.